what's going on hikers in today's video we're doing a fall gear loadout and this is a very very special video one because fall is my favorite season with football basketball gorgeous changing of the leaves and weather for backpacking but also I'm doing a collaboration see I have three friends well, I have more than three friends, but I have three friends who's also doing this video. You may have already watched one of them. If you did, welcome to the channel. So, my three friends are Tuba Solo. I'm so jealous of him. He lives out in California, out west, seeing this amazing country. And he has some amazing gear videos to go along with it. So, he, he has all kinds of gear. Make sure you check out his video after this one on his gear loadout. Second is John Kelly. See, my buddy JK, we actually just swapped gear and then for a night had to use each other's gear in Big South Fork in Tennessee. So make sure you check out his channel after this. And lastly, you probably heard of this guy Dan Becker. Dan is also doing this video with us and he has some sick, sick gear videos. And I'm sure you've already seen, he also brings you along for the ride on the trail. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jeremiah Stringer, and here we talk about all things hiking and backpacking. So today, let's take a look at my fall gear loadout. If you like it, subscribe. Smash that like button. We're actually going to pay a little visit to the gear library. Let's go. Hey, babe. Welcome to the gear library. This is my wife's shelf with all her gear, and this is my shelf with all my gear. If you're wondering how I store the gear, basically most of the stuff that I don't use all the time goes on this. And then inside this little cubicle that my wife bought me, I have most of the things that I take on every trip. Let's take a quick look. So, if you're wondering why I do it like this, I found that I took a lot of time trying to gather everything up from different spots. So I thought, why not keep it all in one location? Then my wife bought me that cubicle and I was like, all right, perfect. So let's go through it. First off, you got a Z seat for a sit pad. Then part of my big three, I have the Neo Air X Lite, which is perfect for colder weather and those fall temperatures. I have a blow-up pillow, which is Trekology. Dan, I know you love those. And then, uh, what is what is this? So, JK's wondering what this was whenever we swapped gear. This is actually a shelf liner, and basically it just keeps your pad from sliding down in your tent while you're laying there at night if you're on a slope. Next up, I have an electronics bag. Inside here is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, portable charger, along with an iPhone cord and uh, just a micro USB cord for the camera. I also keep SD cards in here and extra batteries for my camera. And if you're not doing YouTube, you probably don't need all that stuff and you could go with a smaller battery than a 20,000 milliamp hour. That's a pretty big battery. This is just uh, like an eight liter or 12 liter Osprey dry bag, roll top. And then if it starts raining, I can put anything that I need dry inside there when it comes to electronics. This is my pee bottle. That's why it says don't drink. For, oh, headphones. Can't forget the headphones. For cooking, I actually have my own koozie with a pot that I bought for like eight bucks on Amazon. I'll actually link all the stuff below if you want to check out the, the gear I have if you're interested in looking at the prices and stuff. This is a really light aluminum pot that I built a cozy for and inside I keep all my stuff really compact. Now inside you have a scrubber, I have a lighter to light my stove since it doesn't have a striker. I also have, um, these are like little grips so you don't burn your fingers grabbing your stove because I got something to show you here in a second where I, I didn't use it. This is the BRS. Um, it's a little stove that weighs like 25 grams. I actually just did a review on it and it's really cheap. It's like 15 bucks on Amazon, 16 bucks. And then uh, of course fuel and collapsible cup. Drink my coffee out of in the morning. 
and then that's it for inside the cook kit. It is nice that it all fits compactly inside of my cooking pot. For drinking, I have a bladder. This is just a platypus two liter bladder with screw off top right in the middle. I don't like it over to the side because I like to squeeze through the Sawyer Fool, not the Sawyer Mini. Gave up on that one, Sawyer Fool. I'll also take a scoop along with me because the, the type of um, bladder this is, it's not great if it's really shallow. So always take a scoop with me. This is just a Sawyer bag that's cut off. Pro tip, make sure you air this stuff out after you use it on each trip. If not, it, it'll definitely get mold, especially those like Camelback bladders. Uh, this is a food bag. <laughs> it actually belongs to Jason Hellman Dollar. Um, next time I see him, I'll give it back to him. He was kind enough to let me use it on the Vermont Long Trail. I also keep DEET 100% baby. It's, uh, I think one of my subscribers commented and said that anything over maybe 40 or 50% doesn't really matter, but I've just been buying the 100% um, Ben's DEET. Head net, hopefully I won't need this as much since the weather's cooling down, it's gonna be fall, but that was definitely nice, especially in black fly season. It doesn't weigh much, so I'll bring it along. Another thing that I keep around me is a neck knife. <clears throat> this one's super cheap, it's like 20 bucks. I bought it at Walmart. That way if I lose it, I can just buy another one. It's a KR, or excuse me, CRKT brand. So, try not to hurt anybody with that one. Ziploc bag. I like to keep my phone in here if it starts to rain. Oh, what else we got? Oh, poop kit. Poop kit. Uh, this uh, this was given to me. That's monkey butt. That was given to me on the long trail because I was chafed real bad. And then an extra lighter in there. And then baby wipes. And um, toilet paper. I know I like to bring a lot of toilet paper. What are you going to do? Headlamp. Another piece of electronics. This is the Nightcore NU25, I believe is the number. Yeah, Nightcore NU25. It actually goes up to, I think, like 250 or 360 lumens at its brightest. And then it'll do that for 30 seconds. But it is fairly bright and it's super light. UGQ, I went to Trail Days and bought like 40 or 50 feet of bare hanging cable. It's good because this particular cable, I don't know if all brands sell it, but like UGQ, there's, they have this Reflectix in there. And so when you shine your headlamp on it, it reflects. This is just some miscellaneous things. I like to keep an extra, um, what are these called, O-rings? Yeah, I like to keep an extra O-ring because I lost two Sawyer Squeeze O-rings on the Vermont Long Trail. Luckily, my trail family had extras, but if you lose one and you don't have it, your Sawyer's pretty much useless because you're trying to squeeze through it and it just doesn't work. All the water pours out. My beautiful wife bought me some mini playing cards, and then I keep like a little Esbit cube for fire starting, and you gotta have a patch if you're gonna have a blow up air mattress. So with my x light I always keep a patch with me that way, if I wake up and it's flat the next day, it's not going to be. And then lastly, you have my first aid that goes inside the backpack. Now, I do have some other stuff I'm going to show you here in a second, some clothes and whatnot. But in here, this is your typical like go-to first aid and hygiene. Here, let me show you. My buddy Dragon gave me this on the long trail. Just a stick of sunscreen and then... I, for some reason, carry a whole a whole roll of Luco tape. I don't know. Maybe I'm paranoid. Earplugs, essential when you're sleeping in a shelter. If you're solo, not such a big deal. Medication. This is the pharmacy, baby. So this is some ibuprofen, Tums slash Pepto, and then there's some antihistamines like allergy medicine in here, too. And, of course, I already told you, toothbrush. Make sure you're grabbing like travel size toothpaste or maybe the toothpaste tablets um, if you're looking to start your own hygiene or first aid kit. So travel toothpaste, you can just grab at Walmart. Q-tips, essential on the one-nighters where I bring a little bit more weight. 
floss, dual purpose baby. You can use it to sew and you can use it to keep your pearly whites from rotting out. Benadryl, this is just itch cream for like all the mosquito bites, but like I said, hopefully no more of that since it's fall now, or at least about to be fall. Triple antibiotic ointment for the scrapes and cuts. The blisters, man. I keep um, just like a straight safety pin and just a, uh, or excuse me, a sewing needle, sewing pin, and then a safety pin as well. <laughs> this, this is a modium. You know what that's for, right? Don't want the Hershey's. And then, yeah, Vaseline. This is actually dual purpose, too. Vaseline, you can use it for your lips. Nothing works as well as it, in my opinion. But also, if you put this like on uh, some kindling, you can use this to start a fire. And then, <clears throat> this actually has a purpose, too. You can see it's like uh, kind of dirty inside and stuff. I have this, this little container lined with a compactor bag. This is the same compactor bag that goes in my backpack whenever I go backpacking to keep my stuff waterproof because my backpack is <sighs> got it. This is the Osprey Atmos 65 liter. Now I'm actually looking to get a smaller backpack during the warmer months because this thing's way too big for me. But <clears throat> my colder weather stuff is a little bit bulkier. On this backpack, I actually leave some gear on here. My deuce of spades, that's not poop. That's not poop, John Kelly. What is on that? <laughs> that's <laughs> it's dirt and ashes. <laughs> That's like caked in, bro. What is that? I promise it's dirt and ashes. I'm gonna get my hands near that. It's not. This is actually ashes from digging out a fire pit to start a fire. I also like to leave Germex on there. This is black cherry to attract the bears. I'm just kidding. No bears. Now, what's this guy sleep in? Well, I actually sleep Lunar Solo. Six Moons Designs Lunar Solo. I think it's a great buy. Uh, it cost me a couple hundred bucks plus like 30 to seal it. But Lunar Solo, very light for the price you pay. Um, it does stretch a little bit. It's not like Dyneema. So before you get in it to go to sleep, you'll have to, you know, tighten the straps on the side. I purchased from a third party. Um, a pole to go in the Lunar Solo. If you want to see a Lunar Solo video, let me know in the comments and I'll bring that to you because I haven't reviewed it or really set it up for you guys besides in like trail videos. While I'm walking on the trail, I like to use trekking poles. If you're looking for a good budget option, the Cascade, oh look at that. I got my carabiner on there. That's how I hang my bear bag. The Cascade Mountain Tech with cork candles, I like those because it absorbs sweat, really. Those are a great budget buy. Last time I looked, they were less than 50 bucks, and these lasted me the entire long trail, but they are starting to get worn down here. I do also like that they, uh, they're, they clip closed. They're not twist lock. I don't really like the twist lock. And then a little hack, if you haven't seen me say this before, put your little duct tape or uh, whatever you know tape you want around your uh, trekking poles and then you'll always have it. Something I forgot to show you is my pillow. I do have the air up pillow, but I actually keep it between my legs because my knees like rub together. I also take a Thermarest uh, foam pillow and this thing actually rolls up super small so it fits in my backpack. But what about clothes? I mean, I'm not wearing this hiking. Let's get some clothes, let you see what I'm wearing. Oh, for this, we gotta head to the bedroom. Check this out. My wife actually lets me keep my own hiking clothes drawer. Hi, Mom. Who knew that the lighting was so good in my closet? Let's finish the video right here. Let's go head to foot, okay? Starting with my shirt. What kind of shirt do I wear? If you have seen any of my trail videos, you have seen this performance fishing gear shirt. I actually found this on the trail one day and it fit me perfectly. Sometimes I even wear it out, you know, if I don't want to get sunburned or something, out into the town. 
What about unmentionables? What about uh, underwear? I actually have some ex officio boxers that I use the entire time on the long trail. I typically take two pairs if I'm going, you know, more than a couple days. These I actually wasn't a whole lot um, impressed because they rode up on me pretty much the entire time. Don't get me wrong, the cloth feels amazing, but you know, with this thing riding up every step, it was it was killing me. I don't know if I got the wrong size or what. That is like the athletic compression kind of fit, so maybe that's what they do. When it comes to bottoms, I prefer convertible pants. These zip off at the knee, so if it's going to be really cold or if there's a lot of bugs or something, then I will put on the bottoms, but, you know, in mild weather in the fall, I'm going to wear shorts. Most of the year, I'm going to wear shorts. For socks, we are rolling in style, baby. These are the AT Vermont Long Trail Darn Tough Socks. Darn Tough, awesome. If you haven't heard of them, which you probably have, they make great merino wool socks. I suggest you check them out. Made here in the USA, lifetime warranty. And if you get the ones with the AT logo, they give a portion of the proceeds to help preserve the AT. Socks, I'll normally take two pairs, especially if I know my feet are going to get wet. Now, if it's just an overnighter, I normally won't take camp shoes and I won't take an extra pair of socks. But that's just me. For shoes, I got these old beat up trail runners. These are the Ultra Lone Peak 4.0s. I wore out a pair on the long trail. They lasted almost no time. Made a video about that. These still have a little bit of life and I'm trying to push them to their limits before I try out some new shoe brands. To go along with my trail runners, I normally will wear some gaiters. I always make the stupid mistake though. I put my shoes on and then I go and I'm like, oh, well, now I got gaiters. Now I have to take my shoes back off. So don't make that rookie mistake because I do it all the time still. The only thing I don't like about, you know, taking gaiters, if they get all muddy and wet, they're kind of gross to put on. I'm throwing this in the clothing as well, even though I don't really wear it. I wear a buff, which I'll show you in a second. This is a bandana I normally keep with my cook kit. I don't know why it's not in there right now. guess I left it out and washed it, but this is perfect for wiping out your uh, cooking pot or like wiping, you know, dew or rain off of your tent. I suggest bringing along bandana, a million uses for it. Oh, my poor buff. I think she's had it. I'm going to have to buy another one. My buff I normally will wear a million different ways, but <laughs> that hole is not supposed to be there. This I tried to use as like an oven mitt to pull my, my cooking pot off of a hot fire, and that didn't work at all. I still wear it, but buff another million uses just like the bandana. Now how about some clothes to sleep in? If it's really cold, sometimes I'll wear this during the day, and then I'll wear them at night sleep in them. These are fleece lined wool gloves. Now in the fall I probably won't take them but as the weather changes maybe. To go along with those wool gloves if it's going to be colder out with the fall you know the weather changing sometimes I'll sleep in this beanie or wear it around camp. It's fleece lined and it is uh, wool on the outside. It's the only piece of Patagonia gear that I own because yeah I can't afford it. Patagucci baby. Also, I like to sleep in wool socks, so these are real fuzzy on the inside. Keep my feet nice and warm, and if it's going to be super cold, you know, it gets late fall, winter, I'll wear two pairs of these and put hot hands in between them. There's another life hack for you. And as that fall weather approaches, if I need a base layer to sleep in, this is what I'm going with. These are just some Russell Athletic. Um, compression pants, like kind of like tots. I, I guess they're basically leggings except for guys, but don't tell anyone. And if it's not too cold, I may just sleep in my underwear or some shorts or possibly some like fleece line jogging pants. Uh, these are cotton, so I can't get them wet. Otherwise, I'm pretty much screwed on that front. And last but not least, I have just uh, an athletic wear, non-cotton, synthetic t-shirt that I like to sleep in. And if it's one of those warmer fall nights, I'll just sleep in my underwear, crawl in that sleeping bag. Oh, the sleeping bag. I forgot the sleeping bag. We gotta get some sleeping bag in our life. Let's go. Oh, the sleeping bag. I'm so organized, we gotta keep these in a different closet. Did you hear that? You hear my dogs howling outside? What is it, Golden Graham? Okay, I actually have two sleeping bags. 
um, depending on what the weather's going to be like. I have my cold, cold weather sleeping bag. This is this is the Nemo Disco 15 degree with gills on there. This is a really good one. It's kind of expensive. I bought the extra long, extra wide, and it was like three, four, like three to three hundred and twenty dollars, I think. Got a discount at REI. There's a lot of things I love about this sleeping bag. In fact, as I start using it more in colder weather, I'll probably do a review on it, and I used it on the entire Vermont Long Trail. So if you want to see something like that, let me know in the comments. And for another piece of gear, if it's going to be a mild night, like 50 degree-ish, then I'll just take this thin. This is like a Aegis Max sleeping bag. You can get it on Amazon for under 100 bucks. So it's a great budget starter um, sleeping bag. Now keep in mind, it is only rated for like 50-ish degrees. So, you know, disclaimer, don't try to use it in cold weather because you're probably going to catch uh, hypothermia if you catch that kind of thing. One thing I want to remind you of, make sure to check out my friends' collaboration videos on this same topic. They live in different parts of the U.S., so their gear is going to be different and tailored to their climate and their needs. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one. It's like a daggone gear explosion in here. Maybe Bridget will clean this up. Bridget! Would you mind cleaning up all this gear for me? Uh, no. I will not clean up all your gear for you. She's so nice.